Finally, a visit with the man who makes St. Louis's Eat Local movement possible. He does it by connecting area farmers with area restaurants. Feast Magazine publisher Catherine Neville is our guide. Sweet potatoes, acorn squash, I got butternut squash here. These bins are full of rice, popcorn, you know, uh, non-fresh items. This is Andy Ayers is the go-to guy for St. Louis area restaurants wanting seasonal, here, you know, locally grown, and fresh from the farm produce. My mission statement, I guess, is twofold. One of them is, one half of it is, to make it just as easy for chefs to buy local food as it is for them to call Sexton, our U.S. food service, and buy their produce that way. You know, just call me, text me, email me, you know, I'll be there in the morning with your stuff or in the afternoon, um, or, or else we'll talk about why not, <laughs> you know, but it doesn't involve going to farmer's markets and haggling with prices. I put out a price sheet twice a week, so this facilitates their system anyway. And the other half of the mission statement is to help local growers market their stock. These tomatoes, the last of the 2012 season, are from Nolte Hills Nursery, located west of Herman, Missouri, in the town of Morrison. Alan Nolte originally began in the flower business, but in 2008, in response to a bad economy, Nolte converted most of his greenhouses to grow vegetables. Andy's been a godsend to us, and, and St. Louis has been a godsend to us, because with the local food movement, we just, I guess everything's for a reason, and uh, that's how that all got started. And, and so what are you growing? We grow mainstay, as you can see, tomatoes, but we also grow lettuce, parsley, uh, all kinds of herbs, chives, and so forth. We do most of our growing in the winter. We try to avoid... European cucumbers. Peppers, even. Oh, nice. Peppers, European cucumbers are a big seller, but we try to grow most of our stuff in the winter to avoid, get that little niche going that everybody talks about. And so that we're actually kicking in when most people are starting to slow down. So here we have, at this time of the season, mostly apples. Uh, a big stack of boxes in the back corner is pecans from the Missouri Northern Pecan Growers Association. Andy Ayers' company, Eat Here St. Louis, is a natural evolution from his background owning and operating restaurants. Ayers was a pioneer in offering diners a menu that changed every day based on available local produce. That's it. Eat Here St. Louis started in 2008 and was run out of Ayers' garage. It wasn't long before he moved operations to this facility on Manchester Road in St. Louis. This focus on local, exactly what you're saying, is pushing innovation and creativity in the industry. Sure so does. so this, this kind of evolution in food really kind of goes hand in hand. So we're supporting a local economy, but at the same time, we're creating something much more exciting for the consumer. Well, it's a throwback. You know, again, it's a throwback to the way chefs used to work. You know, rather than write your menu and then write your shopping list and then go out and try and buy the stuff, turn it on its head. You know, buy the best local ingredients you can find, fresh today, then sit down and figure out what to do with them. And you'll be, you know, if you are good at your craft, this you'll find this to be an exciting uh, procedure that will, you know, keep you thinking when you're trying to go to sleep tonight about what to do with those white turnips, you know. And I can't overemphasize the effect it has on the whole crew. Instead of coming in and doing it, I might as well work in a factory, you know, I'm gonna do the cook the same thing day after day. It will excite your entire crew and get them thinking and get them suggesting stuff to you and really make a collaborative effort here to go local with your menu. It's a lot of fun. Those tomatoes from Nolte Hills Nursery are heading to three St. Louis County restaurants, including Cardwell's at the Plaza in Frontenac. Also from Andy, beautiful Lacanado kale. Oh my gosh, look at that. You know, that we got yesterday. So you the know, culinary you creations of chef like and owner something. Bill Cardwell and his staff are on the short list of many area foodies. He buys local whenever he can and appreciates the legwork Andy Ayers puts into scouring the bi-state area for quality products. And he also, in addition to, you know, all the vegetables, he has great local products, honey, uh, grains, uh, grits, uh, butters, I mean, you name it, horseradish, everything. But one of the things that we did talk about is that, you know, 
sourcing this way means that there isn't always availability of something that you necessarily want on a regular basis or a large volume. So how do you adapt to working with change. local products? I mean, our menu changes, and I was joking with you earlier, I have a sickness that I buy too much stuff. Yeah. So then it's kind of like, okay, you know, what am I going to do with all this? So we work it in. You know, we use a lot of vegetables. Um, like in this braised uh, short ribs that we're doing in here, um, it's a cider reduction that I bought cider from Andy. I buy it every fall when they when they're freshly you know pressed, and then we reduce it and cook it down and we actually freeze gallons of it. You know, oh, yeah. So we'll have it all winter. So you know, it's not like it's not just today using it. Ayer says his hands are full right now, but he sees his business expanding as consumer interest in eating local rises. This is such a huge market that. We don't have to be head-to-head -head competitive about it. There's, there, the more we, just like the craft beer guys, they're very cooperative with each other because they understand that we are all working to increase the market for our kind of product. And if we work collaboratively here, it'll be better for all of us. And that's the same, exact same thing in the local foods business.